Okay, thank you and um, good afternoon everyone. Thank you Phil Export for this opportunity to share the opportunities in our jurisdiction. Our office PTIC Stockholm covers the Nordic countries which are Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland and Iceland. Maggie has already given us the overview of the PHF to FTA. Uh, mine will be a short presentation on the opportunities in Norway and Iceland. So in the next seven minutes, uh, this is how my presentation will proceed. I hope that at the end of this discussion, you will have a clearer picture of these two EFTA member states or markets. So where is Norway and Iceland? I'm sure you all are aware of the majestic fjords in Norway and the hot springs and northern lights in Iceland. And as you may know, these countries are located in Northern Europe. You can see in this map that they are those in green color. So cargo transit alone, uh, excluding port and customs clearances from Manila to Oslo, Norway, or Reykjavik, is at least 32 days. So these two countries are relatively small in terms of population. Um, Norway having 5 million and Iceland around only 400,000 as compared to our 100 million. This is also already echoed by Maggie earlier. Um, it is worth highlighting in this table that the uh, countries have high GDP per capita, um, similar to Switzerland and Liechtenstein. They are actually around 15 to 20 times higher than our, our per, uh, GDP per capita. This may be translated to um, purchasing power, which is very high. Also, the PHF to FTA in, in, um, entered into force in June 2018 in Norway and in January last year in Iceland. So for um, we can go over some trends, specifically the import profile and consumer trends in both markets. This table tells us what Norway bought from the world in 2020 and its major suppliers. As we can see, uh, they are mostly industrial products. Um, this ran ranking is based on the total amount of imports. For reference, the Philippines imported 95 billion US dollars in 2020. Uh, but what we are really interested in are the uh, products that Norway bought from the Philippines. As we can see, the top products are in electronics and machineries, and also, also there are some leather goods and apparel in this top five product classification. We can see in this graph uh, that our trade with Norway uh, in these products have been increasing over the years. For Iceland, uh, these are the top products it bought from the world in 2020. And aside from industrial goods, we see substantial imports of animal feed, uh, beverages, spirits, and preparation of pastry products. So in the last five to six years, the top products uh, that Iceland bought from the Philippines or imported from the Philippines are electronics or machineries related, um, preparation of vegetable fruits and nuts, woven apparel or clothing accessories, and wooden articles of wood. So on a consumer level, uh, these are the trends in preferences currently, which is very much similar to the earlier markets discussed. For both markets, uh, Consumers are generally willing to pay more for quality goods as the value for money matters more than low prices. Many consumers in, in these markets do some research before buying uh, products in stores or online and they find both domestic and foreign products appealing. So both Norwegian and Icelandic consumers are especially drawn to new products um, with new technologies. And e-commerce is a huge industry in both countries, which have high penetration in terms of internet use and smartphone usage. Um, and as also seen earlier, uh, there are incre an increasing trend in um, adopting a more environmentally friendly mode of consumption in these two countries. Uh, the second-hand market here is actually booming, especially on the internet for both economic and ecological reasons. The products that are traded mostly in secondhand market are furniture, followed by electronics and appliances, uh, recreational and leisure products. Also, organic food consumption is steadily increasing. In Norway, the infant and child products are the most eco-labeled, followed by the dairy products. So we move on to opportunities and challenges. Our bilateral trade with Norway and Iceland are relatively smaller than earlier countries and regions. In 2020, we exported um, 6.4 million worth of products in Norway and 300,000 uh, US dollars to Iceland. This shows that we have so much room for uh, further growth in both markets. 
And similarly, our ASEAN neighbors have higher trade volumes and bigger values than what we have with these two countries. So I pose and echo this as a challenge, as has already been mentioned by colleagues, for us to catch up, uh, if not surpass the levels that of our ASEAN neighbors. As you can see, Vietnam and Thailand um, have leading share in the Norwegian and Icelandic market, followed by Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. So for the perspective consumer products we see that have big opportunities in terms of the parameters or figures we have considered or which are the top buys in Norway and Iceland and also the trend in consumer market. We see that fruits and vegetables, uh, fresh dried or canned clothing uh, and footwear, furniture and handicrafts, as well as electronic products and chemicals have huge potential in the region. As mentioned by Asik Allen earlier, accessories and jewelries have also uh, good potential to be exported. Our coconut and um, fishery products uh, have relatively significant share in, in the market, but we can further increase these exports. Um, also, uh, we see the, really the huge potential are in quality, innovative, and eco products. The story behind each product or creation is what really sells in, in the region. This was mentioned by Ben. And also, so if your products have has a good story, it's, it's actually a plus. Most of these products have very low MFN, but um, these are some of the product lines that we can really make the most of. For example, men's cotton shirts, um, when we export them to Norway, they, have zero, they are zero under the PHF to FDA. So as with fruits and other mixtures um, and ground nuts. So um, in summary, there's so much room for growth for our exports to Norway and Iceland as we are starting from really a small export base. And also the recovery from the pandemic for both economies is on the horizon. Um, I may have failed to mention this earlier, but Asian cuisine has gained popularity in recent years. In Norway specifically, there is a growing Asian population, including um, first-generation migrants and Norwegians born to migrant parents. So there, this is actually a good um, industry that we can explore. There are opportunities for organic food, innovative and eco-friendly products. And lastly, uh, value for money is important for uh, Norwegian and Icelandic consumers and quality is, is really greatly valued. So this is actually the end of my brief presentation. Uh, you may follow us on our socials. We are on Instagram and Twitter. We're not on Facebook. And here's our email address. We would be happy to talk to you and assist in ways we can. So I believe uh, Phil Expert will send copies of our presentation um, after this webinar. We have included additional slides, which may be, which may be in May not have gone through uh, this presentation given the limited time. So, ayun po. Maraming salamat.